All right, now pleased to welcome in Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim and Jim, long time no see. We saw each other uh, last week at Brewster Academy and uh, talked a little bit about your team and the shooting. I mean, you were you were smiling ear to ear when you thought about all the shooters you have on this team. Is this as good a shooting team maybe as you've ever had? Oh, overall? yeah, by far. Um, we haven't really had great shooting teams with the, since the three-point line came in. You know, it's kind of been, you know, we worry about defending it because of our defense. So we've had to change our defense dramatically over the years to defend it better. In the old days, you let people shoot out there. Now you don't let them shoot out there. But we've never really had great, I mean, you know, we had Jerry McNamara, you know, obviously, who was a great shooter. We had Demetrius Nichols. We've had isolated cases where we've had guys. And we've had some teams where we've had two or three guys that were pretty good shooters, but not great. Uh, we have four guys that can shoot, you know, could shoot in the 40 percentile. Uh, range from the three-point line, uh, which we never had, and so it's different, a little bit different. You and you do things a little differently um, in terms of your offense and how you try to get shots. And even on the fast break, you're not going to necessarily even a two-on-one. You might take a three. Right. You know, it's uh, percentages are in your favor. Uh, if you can get open threes, you want to take them. But during a set half-court offense and you're playing a good defensive team, you might never get a really wide open three, you know, the, the tough ones. But where in a fast break, you might get them. And the other one is then a rebound, offensive rebound. And normally, even against good defensive teams, you can get 12 to 15 offensive rebounds. And if you throw all of them out, that's a much higher percentage shot. I mean, you, you shoot 40% from the three, even if your team shoot 32, you can shoot 40, 45, 50% on those shots. So you're really working on getting the ball and getting out of the three point line. And so that's the, the kind of things you emphasize. And uh, the more threes you shoot, more defenses stretch out, the more you try to get to the foul line, get by and get to the foul line. That's what Marek Dojan did so well for us last year. He would get by. And so we have to find somebody this year that also can get by and get to the basket because those lanes are going to be there. You know, the thing that's interesting with shooters, obviously you like them to make shots, but even if they're not making shots, they're going to be guarded at the three-point line. So, so does that mean like like Joe obviously shoots it better than his percentage showed last year? We know that. And, and yeah, for he him, ended up in the 34s. Yeah. And, but he's capable of shooting it better. Again, generally guys get better each year as they progress and they shoot 32, 35, maybe 37. And anything over 33 is great for a guard because that's 50%. And guards don't normally shoot 50%. So if you can shoot 33 or better from the three-point line, you want that guy taking as many shots as you can because you're going to win a lot of games making 50% of your shots, and that's what 33 is. But so, again, in, uh, with a shooter like Joe, I remember Trevor Cooney was here, and he would struggle a little bit, but they guard him, and we had guys that could drive to the basket, Mike Benajay or C.J. Fair. And the reason they're driving to the basket and there's nobody there is because that guy's over there guarding Trevor Cooney. So that's a big part of what shooters can do. And we're going to have two or three shooters on the court all the time. So that should be good for our offense. Who, who drives it, Jim? Is, is Joe the guy with, with kind of losing that weight again that hopefully we'll be able to get by, guys? Well, you know, Buddy's gotten better with the yep. ball. So he can get by and get a shot. Joe can get by. Um, I think Jimmy is pretty good with the ball at forward at 6'9". He is pretty good putting the ball on the floor. Uh, Benny a little bit. Cole Swider is more of a shooter, but he can make a dribble move. Um, again, uh, I think in the backcourt, uh, Saimir is good penetrating with the ball. He gets into the lane. 
So I think we've got guys that can do that. And with Jesse getting better all the time, we have a seven foot offensive presence that we really haven't had. So I think we're the best, this is the best offensive team we've had in a long time. And, uh, you know, we've got, we've got good size defensively, but, you know, we're going to have to work hard on our defense. Uh, but I think offensively, we're in a good position. Going to kind of outscore some people this year, right? Try to try to outscore them this year. And I know you talked about it athletically. You're not you're not at the level that you've been, but you sacrifice some of that athleticism for some of that shooting and skill. It's shooting, and, and our size is good. You know, we're we're bigger than we've been at forward. Last year we were six eight, six seven, and six five, six eight, or really six seven. Quincy's really six five, seven, so six five. So now we're six nine, six nine. So that's a difference maker and having Jesse in the game more at seven feet, that's a difference maker. And our guards are big in their experience. So I think we've got a good overall team and I think we will be able to, to, to you, you can't win if you can't do something on the defensive end. You just can't, unless, you, I mean, a rare once in a while, you're gonna beat the bad team. Right. But you're not being the good teams if you can't stop them sometimes. I remember when I asked you, I think it was it had to be Buddy's freshman year when you came into BC. I said, uh, so what's it like to coach Buddy? And he was playing well at that point. You're like, I hate it. I, and I laughed. I'm like, he's playing great, Jim. He's doing way better than you would have thought at that point. And what's it going to be like coaching two of your kids? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, as I said, I hate part of it, but I love that they're yeah. with me and I love coaching them. And obviously when they're playing good, I really love it. But um, the thing with coaching your son or sons is there's always the father part. So my main goal and my main you know, task is to win the game for our team, coach our team, get our team to win the game. And that's what I'm thinking about. But right alongside that, you're sitting there watching the game as a father and you want your son to do well. So there's no way that isn't important. You know, I'm not going to change anything or anything to do that, but I want them. So I always have that second track, which is, uh -huh, are they, how's Buddy doing? How are you doing? You know. And, and, and what, is, hey, what, what Julie's going to say later too. Uh, I don't worry about that. But I worry about, you know, the team when that's what you're focused on. Do this, do that. But you're, as you're watching, you go, oh, buddy's having a good game. That's good. You know, that's, that's good. So I, you think about both. Both. There's two tracks. Is it amazing to think how far buddy's come since you and I sat down at the Peach Jam and talked about him and whether he was really good enough to even play at Syracuse? I didn't decide until... Peach Jam, we made the seven threes against Team Penny, and you know they were the best team at, at uh, UYBL and Nike that year. And uh, you know he he proved that he could make them against a good team. And uh, I, I knew he he would work hard. He he does more work than anybody I've ever coached, and I'm not saying that because he's my son. But I've had really good workers here, guys who are in the gym all the time. Buddy has outworked all of them, so he's become more than a shooter. If he was just a shooter, he'd be pretty good. Yep. But you can't just be a shooter in the ACC and get 27 against Virginia or get, you know, average 18 a game in the ACC. You can't just be a shooter. You have to be able to do other things. And so he made it, he, he helped, he made himself into a player that could do other things. And uh, that's what I, I look at, you know, the, in, in, in most proud of as a coach and a father is that he's worked with Jeremy and he's gotten better. He's worked with Eric Devendorf, gotten better. And uh, he's, he's pushed himself. He was never satisfied being a shooter. He made shots that first game at BC that helped us turn the game around. Sure you know, did. I, I saw the Jim Christian the other night. He said, but he always made them against us. You know, he had great games against BC and games that we were behind it. And he would, as a freshman, you don't. It's hard for shooters to come in the game and make shots when you're behind. And he did against them and a couple of a few other teams. So, uh, but he's made himself into a really good basketball player, and that's 
that's that's what we hope all of our players do. We hope they get better, and uh, he, he's done that. Give me kind of you. You mentioned Jesse a couple times, and he came on strong last year, right? Had the big game against I think Carolina. Played well against Houston. You know, really came on when you gave him extended minutes towards the end of the year. You know, obviously you, you, Barama's coming back too from the injury. What is that that front court kind of look like right now in the middle of the zone? Well, we had to play Marek at center last year because Jesse wasn't ready. Barama was hurt, so it was a good team. We, we were able to beat some people offensively with that lineup and, and hang in there defensively and get to the tournament and have success. So, but now we're bigger at center we can go with the centers and we have good forwards. So, you know, we don't have to do that. We'll play our centers. There'll be a few times that we use a three forward lineup, but not, not like last year, that was the lineup. So Jesse and Barama and Frank has gotten a lot better as well. Uh, I, I tell Frank every day, he came in early and he was young, but you're a freshman still. You know, don't get upset that you're a sophomore and not playing well. You're a freshman and he's getting better every day. So we haven't had three legitimate physical centers in a long time. I mean, I can't remember the last time, right? Going back to Rakeem Christmas, you know, really. So um, he was up here the other day. I forgot how long it's been since he was here. You know, it's been a while. Yep. And uh, so that makes us different. And I think Jesse's better on both ends. I think he's still getting there because he never played before. Is another one. Is. I think he played soccer. But he just, he's still a little ways away, but he's getting there. And uh, so we're happy to have him. What are... And I know, I mean, again, it's a tough question to ask, but what are realistic expectations for this team from you going into the year? Do you, do you have I them? I mean, I think any team in the country that's pretty good, you know, we're pretty good. Any yep. team in the top 30, 40, you can at least make a sweet 16. Yep. If things go right, we weren't in the top 30 at any point in time last year. Yep. Any point in time, right? I mean, ever. We were the last two, well, we might not have been the last team last year, but we were one of the last teams in the tournament. Yep. So we weren't a top 40 team. We made the Sweet 16. And, uh, I mean, Houston was really good. We lost to a Final 14. Most of the years in the tournament that we've had success, we've lost to a Final 14, whether it was Duke, North Carolina, Houston. Um, you know, other times we, you know, if we didn't, they weren't a Final Four, they were pretty close to a Final Four team. So, um, you know, when you get to the, the, the stage that you can get to the Sweet 16, then you get the Final Four. And if you get the Final Four, you can, you can win. Uh, that's college basketball. I mean, last year, and it usually does, it became clear at the end of the year that it was Baylor and Gonzaga. Yeah. But UCLA made a heck of a run from nowhere to nowhere. nowhere. Right. And, they could have obviously could have beaten Gonzaga. I don't think they would have beaten Baylor, but I don't think anybody would have beaten Baylor. They had three great guards and good players in other positions. But so somebody may emerge this year, but I think any team that's a top 30 team or 40 team, you have a realistic chance to get to the Sweet 16. That's very possible. And uh I like our team. We have two fifth-year seniors with Jimmy and, and Brahma. We have Buddy and Cole Swider, our fourth-year seniors. Uh, Joe and, and Cy, our third-year guards. And Jesse's in his third year. Uh, there aren't too many teams with that age in the country. So... You got one guy, really, Jim. You got one guy in the rotation, and Benny Williams. So to probably right be a, a freshman or even a sophomore. You don't. I mean, yeah, you're, he's you're older. He's a freshman, and he's a talent, and yeah. he's learning every day from the veteran guys. And he'll help us. Uh, obviously, he will, will, will be a factor for us this year. And uh, we're excited about what he can do. But certainly, we we're going to rely on the veteran guys. Should be interesting. Speaking of veterans, last question. 
uh, your, your, your buddy down in Durham, uh, the swan song this year. I, I don't know if you've thought about what you're going to give him when he comes to, uh, to Syracuse on uh, January 15th, uh, rocking chair. I, I don't know what it's going to be, but. Well, we'd, you know. we'd like to give him an L. That's what we'd like to give him. <laughs> to Durham, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what, I don't think there's anything he can do. I mean, it's, he's already got it all. So yes. good uh, point. It'll have be you thought about well. there'll be 34,000 people here to say goodbye to him. So yeah. that'll be a pretty good tribute. <laughs> have you have you thought about Jim? And I know I saw some comments recently where you said, I I think a lot of people feel like, hey, both of your kids are going to be gone after this year. This is going to be it. This makes sense, right? You're going to be uh, 77 years old. It makes sense. Your your sons will, you know, you can watch Buddy play in the NBA, hopefully, or uh, what not in, in golf well, I can get and home and play in the NBA. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, the way I look at the, the last 10 years, I, everybody had me retired 10 years ago and I wouldn't have been to two final fours and two sweet 16s and been able to coach my son. So I don't know what's ahead. I do know that if I was 60, I wouldn't even, there would be nobody talking about retirement. So age should not matter. I do not have to run up and down the court. I can go out and coach with as much energy right now as I've ever coached with. So the only reason you're retired is you're 76. That's it. I mean, Warren Buffett hasn't retired yet, has he? He's 90, and he does the same thing I do. He manages what he needs to do. He's not running up and down. I'm not running up and down. I enjoy coaching. I've adjusted to the transfer. We Portal, we lost three, four guys in a portal. We got three the next day. So you have to be able to make that adjustment. As a coach, you have to adjust. We will adjust to the NIL. You know, Buddy's doing well. Our other players will do well with the NIL. Um, and uh, so, Is Buddy, yeah, pay, I mean, Buddy paying you for anything yet? Any appearances at his camps or anything like that? You going to make know, some money from him? Everybody worries about them paying their taxes. And I – I've been paying his taxes for the last five years when he makes something. So I don't, I'm sure at the end of the year, my tax guy, he just pays it. And then he says to me, well, I took care of your kids' taxes. Exactly. Oh, okay. This year, it's going to be a little more significant. There's going to be, I won't be paying, well, he has, you know, he's always had to pay two or 3,000. This year, it's going to be a little different, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, I, he's having a great time and I just want him to have a great experience. And, and that's what it's about. But as me coaching, um, you know, the coaches that recruited against us 10 years ago saying I wouldn't be coaching are no longer at the schools that they were coaching at. And I'm about lasted there. almost, I mean, you're going to outlast all of them now. I mean, you're going to outlast Kay, Roy. I mean, we got Leonard. I remember when I was in the Big East, I didn't think I'd outlast anybody. I didn't think John or, or Louie or Roly or any of those guys. I think, so, Le hey, Leonard may get you. Leonard still looks like he's about 45. Leonard could coach for 10 years. Easy. Easy. I wouldn't be shocked. And, the, right. and that's the thing. Why worry about it? Yeah. Bob Huggins. Take it as a year to year, right? I mean, it's a year to year and your help. I mean, I saw you. I, I have day. no plan to retire. Now, that does that mean I won't retire? I mean, I feel great. If I didn't feel great, I'd retire. If I wasn't motivated, I'd retire. And none of those things are true. I've got great staff. We have guys that can take over at any time. I do decide to retire. We don't have to go outside. Right. Duke and North Carolina have proved this year. You bring somebody from the inside and you move on. And that's the best way to move on in a program. When Roy Danforth left, he had, left, he had more success here than any coach had had. And he'd been to the Final Four. And there was some doubt about, you know, are you going to bring this assistant up? Or are you going to go get a recognizable coach? And luckily, there was a guy, one guy in that committee that was smart. He was the chairman of the committee. And he said, no, Jim, you're, you're going to be the guard coach. So that, that works pretty good, that, that formula. And uh, we're in a good position. And uh, I'm excited about, I, I get excited every year for this team. And I'll be excited next year too. So uh, that's where it is. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's just focus on playing basketball, trying to win games, and uh, have fun doing it. <laughs> well, 
I, I appreciate it, Jim. Looking forward to seeing the team this year, making a lot of shots, a lot of threes. Should be fun to watch. And as long as you can, you know, defend a little bit, I, I think it should be pretty good, right? We'll defend. There you go. All right. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Thank you. Before we move on, let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up for Bet Rivers yet, now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their rush pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, it's more secure, and it's more reliable. Now that basketball season is tipping off, get in on the action at betrivers.com today or by downloading the Bet Rivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And while I got you here, let's talk about the Field of 68 Media Network, where college basketball matters most all year round. This is a digital media and podcast network that we've been building over the course of the last year. We have shows hosted by some of your favorite players covering the program that they love the most. AJ Guyton hosts the House of Hoosier. Eric Devendorf covers Syracuse on the scorer's table. Dan Dickow hosts the Gonzaga Bulldog broadcast. We have Florida's Patrick Young and Duke's Andre Dawkins and North Carolina's Shimon Williams and Michigan's Stu Douglas and Illinois' Deion Thomas. The list goes on and on and on. We have more than 30 shows right now. So hit the links below and check them all out. And while you're at it, make sure that you go check out the Field of 12 Media Network, your home for college football. All right, that was Syracuse coach Jim Beheim. Now, uh, pleased to welcome in two guys who know the Syracuse program as well as anybody not named Beheim. Uh, first, we've got Eric Devendorf, former Syracuse player, uh, now a member of the Field of 68, hosts his own podcast called The Scorer's Table, and Mike Waters, who, again, longtime beat writer. I don't know how long, Mike. I don't want to age you too much, but a longtime beat writer for the Syracuse Post Standard. Thanks for having us, Jeff, and thanks for not exactly uh, saying how old I am or how long I've been doing this. Exactly. Listen, neither one of us uh, need to uh, say our ages at all, especially with Devo on here, who's young and spry and hitting threes on the TBT. But uh, let's get down to it here. Let's get down to it and talk <laughs> about this Syracuse team. And if there is cause for concern, you know, not the most athletic team in the world, but man, do they have shooters. And uh, let's start off, Devo, a little bit from you of kind of what you think of this group this year and what realistic expectations are for this team. Well, I mean, I think they can surprise a lot of people. Like you said, they have shooters all around. I think they have um, good length in the zone this year. I mean, you got Benny Williams coming in, freshman, who's supposed to be really good. You got Barama coming back. And then I think Jesse and Frank are going to be a lot better this year, especially Frank. I've heard a lot of good things about him and just how he moves athletic ability. And I think in that center position, you just need a guy who could, uh, you know, move, cover space, get deflections, block shots, alter shots. And uh, we got a few options there. And then obviously, um, you know, with Buddy coming back and, um, you know, Jimmy, and then I like Cole coming in. I heard he's, he's one of the best shooters in the country. Um, and then also Samir, I think he's, He's going to do a good job of coming in, backing up Joe. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. I think he's tough, gritty. Um, and if he can, you know, get a consistent jump shot, he'll, you know, he'll be even better and be able to contribute even more. So um, I think they'll surprise some people. They got, they got a lot of tools. They got some, um, some guys to work with. And, uh, you know, I'm biased, so I'm hoping the best for him. Yes, you are. No doubt about it. Mike Waters, not biased. We're going to get a, a real deal here coming from Mike. Listen, the last five years have been, in the regular season, fairly mediocre. They're four games over 500 over the last five years in ACC play. Um, is it going to be much different this year, Mike? Or do or you think Syracuse fans should kind of uh, see about the same of what they've seen, different team, but similar results in the regular season? You know, I, I think they have a chance maybe to do a little bit better in conference uh, this coming year than they've been in the last five or six, as you pointed out. Uh, most of those years coming in right at 500 or maybe a game over because the ACC doesn't have a ton of juggernaut teams. If you come into this season, or you, you look at the schedule, um, they don't have any real gauntlets where they're playing four or five teams in a row or three games on the road in a row. You know, they're having to replace both forwards. 
but they're going to, they have a chance of doing it with the guys with a lot of experience with, you know, the names that Eric mentioned, Cole Swider from Villanova coming in fourth year player, Jimmy Bayheim comes in from Cornell again, you know, a fourth year guy, guy with a lot of division one playing time under his belt. Um, and you were mentioning the, the lack of athleticism and you're right to, and it is going to be a concern, especially on the boards, but if, any, whichever two of those three forwards start, whether it's Cole Swider, Benny Williams, or Jimmy Beheim, you're bigger at, at forward than you were last year, a lot bigger. I mean, Cole Swider's two inches taller than Quincy Garrier, and, and Benny and Jimmy are both four, four inches taller than Alan Griffin. So you may not have the athleticism, but you are bigger, taller, longer with guys who have experience so that you hope that they can hit the ground running, knowing what they're doing on defense and playing that zone. All right. Mike says, you know, there's a question whether Jimmy Bayham is going to start here. All right. Like, is there any question, <laughs> Eric, any question at all? I mean, that's tough. I mean, he's coming in his fifth year. Um, you would think he would get a, a look at starting, but again, I, I know how coach is. He's going to, uh, you know, play the guy who's playing the best in practice, you know, so there's there's a lot of guys competing at that spot. Uh, but I think offensively, we're going to be able to space the floor a lot better, too. I mean, with all those shooters, now you open up driving lanes and it makes it easier for for Joe and, and Samir when he comes in. And also, um, you know, we've seen Buddy improve, you know, in that area in this game as well. So, um, you know, we'll have options offensively, but defensively, I I, I do understand the, the lack of athleticism, but um, I think guys can move good enough to where they can cover space to get to shooters. And then also, um, you know, our guards are going to have to come in and help rebound. So, um, yeah, that'll be the question going into the season. How can we do defensively? I think offensively, um, you know, we're going to be able to score the ball, but can we put it together on the other end? I think one thing that's going to be interesting, guys, is, is the point guard play. You know, obviously Joe's still a work in progress. He certainly got better last season, but he's not a natural point guard. Not that you have to have a, a true point guard these days. You really don't. But they've got a lot of guys that, like we said, shooters. Shooters, scores. But do they have enough, like, shot creators, guys that can put it on the floor, um, you know, and, and make plays that way? Obviously, Buddy's gotten so much bet better. But, but how do you guys kind of see the point guard duties? Is it going to be Joe at having the ball in his hands? primarily or are we going to see something else you want this one eric or you want me to start go ahead go i'll, I'll piggyback off you <laughs> you know i think you got to look at this year for joe gerard as his sophomore year uh because i i think last year was just a lost year for the kid uh, you know they entered the season having not been able to play together not been able to work out together and he put on a lot of weight because he was doing football workouts with his friends back home in Glens Falls. And, you know, he was a, he was a football player in high school as well as a basketball star. He put on nearly 20 pounds. Uh, it was, it was too much all at once without him also being able to incorporate cardio and running up and down the court, like a basketball player does. And I think you saw it last year and he wasn't able to get into a rhythm. The whole team wasn't, but especially Joe, they had the 10 day stoppages before the opener they had, he lost his shooting guard for three games in December when Buddy had to sit due to close contact. And then Joe and Buddy and two other uh, scholarship guys actually contracted COVID right ar around Christmas. And with Joe, it was a concern. And again, it, it hurt his conditioning because he's got asthma. So when he got COVID, it really hurt. And I, you saw it in his play. So I'm basically taking last year and throwing it out the window for Joe and now let's look and see what he can do now. And, you know, one last thing before I, I, I want to hear what Eric has to say about the guy. Um, but Joe now has 58 career starts under his belt. It's a lot. There's not a lot of power five schools that can say we have a guy with that many starts because usually that guy's gone to the NBA by now. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's going to help Joe as well. No, I agree. I think it's it's going to be Joe. I mean, he'll he'll have the the point guard duties. I think he definitely struggled last year. Um, you know, obviously COVID and everything had a lot of stuff out of whack. He was out of shape. I mean, you could tell even from the year before he was driving to the basket, getting to the foul line. It seemed creating for others a lot better um, than he did this past year. So I, I saw him. He looks like he's lost some weight. He looks like he's he's moving a little bit better. So. 
Well, I think coach just wants him to go out there and play his game. Like he's not a natural one. We know that, but go out there and be a threat offensively. If you're, if you're open, shoot the ball. If you can get into the lane, make a play, make a play, shoot it, you know, shoot the little mid range or, or get it all the way to the rack. We've seen him do it. We've seen him get to the free throw line. So he has the capability. Um, but I think another thing that's really going to help him is Samir coming off the bench because Samir is a, he's, he's a better defender. Um, he's a more physical guard. He's going to get up in you. And um, he has that good positive energy that, uh, you know, if Joe is not doing well, he's going to be there to support him. And then he's also going to be there to help him. So, uh, you know, I think that can be a big help for Joe. And last year you could kind of see it. He was just trying to do too much. You know, he was over dribbling. He was, uh, you know, playing, you know, side to side instead of north and south, you know, keep it simple, you know, come off if the shots there, take it. If you got an opportunity to make a play, go ahead and do that. And, um, you know, I think with Samir coming in, it'll take some pressure off of him because Samir's a, and again, Samir's not a real one either. Right. You know, he's not, he's not a, he's not a true point guard, but he's a guy that has, I think, more playmaking capabilities as far as, you know, creating by himself, getting by and, and getting into the lane. So, um, you know, those two guys will um, complement each other good. What, what is the, the big man situation you guys think going to look like? Is it big men by committee? Or, or do you think one of these guys, Mike, will emerge? I mean, Jesse looked great in spurts down the stretch last year. Can he kind of piggyback on that and, and become, I don't know, again, I don't see somebody being the guy. Uh, but they got to, those three guys got to stay healthy too. Yeah, and of course, last year, Barama Sidibe coming off a, a great finish to his junior year, gets hurt in the season opener, and, and he's basically done for the entire year, made one appearance, uh, you know, mid-January or late January, and that was it. So uh, that really hurt Syracuse last year. I, I'm i carrying the banner for Jesse Edwards going into this season. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I really, I'm a big believer in the kid. If you look back at last year, the first 20 games of the season, he only appeared in 10 and he only averaged five minutes a game in those, in those 10 appearances. So nothing, right. He, he's, he's playing less than, I don't know, you know, by Musa Keita did as a freshman. And, but then the last eight games of the year, he plays in every single one of them and he's averaging 15 minutes a game. And five of these are in the postseason. And the difference in the zone was amazing. And all of a sudden now the forwards are out on the shooters and the guards were not criticizing the guards for letting the ball get in the high post anymore. All that criticism of Joe and Buddy, oh, they're terrible on defense. The ball's getting to the high post. Well, it didn't matter when Jesse was coming up and defending the high post at 6'11", seven feet tall and long arms. And man, it made such a difference. If, if he can make just a, another small leap here over the off season, he changes things. Yeah, you know, you, I, I agree. Went, I, I, I yeah. like Jesse a lot. Yeah, me too. I, I think he's the guy with the most upside. And if, and if he could take that big jump, then you're talking about a team that again, with all these shooters and, and yes, athletically, they're not at the, the level of some of these other teams that they're going to be playing against in the ACC, but you need a guy like that defensively. Yep. Yeah, and if Barama is just healthy enough to play 15 minutes a game, you know, don't put a lot of wear and tear on those tires, you know, um, you know, that gives a, a reliable guy there in the center mix with young Jesse Edwards. I say young, he's going to be a junior. Um, you know, that all of a sudden that center position is looking not as much like a liability, but more like a strength. Well, you think about it, we, we have a lot of depth at that position anyway. We forgot, and I know, you know, John Bull, I mean, I know he he may not see a lot of time, but he, you know, you're talking about depth. We have depth at that position. And uh, like I said earlier, I, I've heard a lot of good things about Frank, just how he moves. I know he's super athletic. I mean, I've, you know, seen him dunking the ball, his head's above the rim. And, um, but no, Mike's right. Jesse, I just think towards the end of the year, uh, he just showed what he, he can do. He's skilled. I mean, he's more skilled than people know. He's not going to get a chance to get the ball a lot, obviously. But, uh, you know, if he did, he, he has moves and he's able to, um, you know, go ahead and get some shots up. But I think this at that position, it's just super important to, you know, have a guy in there who, who one, knows it. Uh, you got to talk. You got to communicate. And Brahm will start the year out. He'll start the year out. He's, he's a senior and, uh, you know, coach is comfortable with him. He, and like you said, he was having a great junior year and obviously with the injury he messed everything up, but um, he'll start him and then, and it'll be by committee. And I think 
Um, you know, if Jesse could, um, you know, really continue what, what he, uh, you know, was doing towards the end of last year, then he'll start to see, you know, most of the minutes. And, um, you know, if we got a guy in there who can be, con who can be consistent, um, that changes the whole game for our defense. I mean, the, that middle guy, when, when Syracuse has success, has always been good. It's Fab Mello, by Musiketa, um, you know, AO. I mean, you, that middle guy has always uh, made a huge difference defensively for us. And Eric mentioned all the young guys. I'll mention a Tom Thomas, right, uh, exactly, Ronnie Cycli, right. and Roosevelt Boo. <laughs> yes, yeah, the main, the, the OGs, the main ones. Yeah, That's for right. sure. No, but it's it is true. I mean, you think about it, and up until the last few years, it was always a strength of, of of the Syracuse team. And really, the last few years, they haven't had those guys in the middle of the zone that that teams were accustomed to. And I, again, it's why the zone hasn't been nearly as effective. Um, all right, Buddy Behan. Amazing. Like, I remember doing a story on him at the PGM his junior year and talking to Jim and watching. And to think that this kid has turned into an, probably an NBA player. I mean, should be an NBA player. We'll see what he does this season. But, man, anybody who's that type, that type of size and can shoot the ball like Buddy can shoot it, he's going to have a chance to play in the league and stay in the league. Um, how shocked – are you guys, uh, Mike, you can go first uh, of his progression and what does he need to do this year? Because he's got to be not good. He's got to be great almost every night. I think for this team to have a chance to be, you know, a top 25 team all year. Probably more shock than I was that Andy Routens became uh, uh, the player he did. Um, you know, another guy who was given a scholarship only because of his last name and the legacy he had at the school. Um, you know, it, it, it really is a shock. You know, I, I thought, you know, Buddy's inability to create his, and not, not create his shot, because that implies putting it on the floor and, and driving or something. Just creating space enough to get your shot off your three-point shot I, I didn't know if he was ever gonna get there and he did and he did pretty quickly uh, and now he's figured out other moves you know how to you know make the guy pay for him he's it's the slowest move in the country but to go into the lane <laughs> it's slow but effective yeah you know you try to, you know, if, if you're another shooting guard and the guy you're guarding six foot six and shooting a fadeaway in the lane, you're not blocking it. And Buddy's developed that, perfected it. Uh, but I agree with you, though. Buddy's going to have to carry a, a big load here this year for this team, especially early on, while guys like Jesse Edwards at center and Benny Williams over forward, uh, while, he, while these other guys kind of figure things out and uh, yeah, but he's going to have to carry them early on. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say I'm I'm shocked, but maybe how quickly though. You know, I I just know how much you know the kids in the gym and and how hard he works, and you know it's two three times a day he's in the weight room, and you know when you're working that hard and you're that consistent with your work ethic, then you know the confidence is just going to. Um, you know, keep going up, keep going. Up. And, and you've seen it with them. I mean, you know, if you know, buddy, uh, you know, he's a quiet kid. He's not saying a lot on the court. He's not, uh, he, he's just not saying a lot overall, but now, now you see last year, right. But you see last year, he's hitting shots. Now he's, he's talking a little bit. He's, he's getting riled up. So, I mean, you can see the difference in, in his confidence level. And I think a lot of times like that can put a player you know, to a whole nother level, you know, regardless, you know, it could be a guy who's, who's better than you skill wise, but your confidence is on fire and you're playing like that. Now you're the better player. And, and, and you're right, Jeff. He, I think he put himself and gave himself an opportunity to play in the NBA when you're shooting the ball like that. And you're, you're six, six. I mean, you're definitely going to have a spot where you could come in and, and, and knock down shots. He still has a lot of work to do, but um, I think this year is a great opportunity for him to, um, go ahead and show scouts and show people that, hey, I, I am the man and I could I could carry a team and, and we could win games. And um, a big thing for him this year is I think he has to be more efficient, you know, like when you, shooting the ball. You got you got to take good shots and you got to make the shots. That's what they want to see in the NBA. You're not going to go in the NBA next year and and be a starter, or be a guy that's going to play 
you know, uh, you know, 30 minutes. It's it's going to be a, a spot where you come in and, and look to hit shots for eight to 10 minutes and you got to be efficient in doing that. So um, I think if he can do that this year and I think he will, you know, he'll have, he'll have times where the defense is on him and he's going to have his his off games. But overall, I think um, he's put himself in a great position to be able to, um, you know, lead this team. And, um, you know, I think he'll do well. Did, did he get his recent recent uh, trash talking from you? Is is that why this is uh, last year? I like, you know, he started you know to talk a little. I, I like to think that it rubbed off a little bit. You know, when we played when we played one on one, I'm not. You know, if we're playing, I'm not holding back. I don't care. If, you know, if you're my daughter, you're gonna you're, you're gonna hear a little bit of it. So maybe. I can I can only picture what he says though. Like whatever he says to trash talk, I, I don't think you can take it seriously, no matter what it is. You look at him and you're like, come on, man. No, you know way. what? He doesn't really, he's not really going to say anything. He doesn't really say anything to me. It's just, it's just, I don't know. His body language is a little bit different, but now, you know, he might not say anything to me, but you no, know, he's going out on that court. He's going to, he's going to say something for sure. But that's, that's just him. That's, I mean, he's, uh, he's gained that confidence because of the hard work that he's put in. I mean, in, you know, since eighth grade, I remember seeing him and nobody, you know, nobody thought Buddy Baham would be playing at Syracuse, let alone, Start. have a chance to be one of the top scorers of all time in, in, in school's history. So that's, that's a testament to his hard work. And, um, and man, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah. You try to be objective if you're, if you're Mike and, and myself, but it is hard to be objective with somebody like Buddy Bayham. It, it really, you know, I always say like, you don't, I don't root for teams ever, but I do root for kids. I do. And, and Buddy Bayham is one of those kids that I have rooted for and I'll continue to root for. And he just, he does all the right things. You know, he does all the right things. Uh, all right. So his dad is going to be 77 on November 17th. If I had told you guys 10 years ago that Jim Beheim would still be coaching at 77 years old, Mike, what would you have said? I would say that's a bit of a stretch. You know, I know he's not <laughs> going to walk away as early as other guys will or whatever, but all right, that's going to be a bit of a stretch. 77's getting on up there and, you know, I remember I was in Jim Beheim's office back in the old Manly Fieldhouse many years ago. And I asked him about some coach that had just retired and how long he was going to do it. And he said, oh, I'm, I'm not going to coach past 60. <laughs> <laughs> and we were 60s way back uh, in the rearview mirror now. And, you know, he blows through 60, 65. And, you know, I just think he still gets a, you know, gets, gets a, you know, that juice or whatever that, that coaches get from coaching a game and preparing a team and, 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 and winning a game. Um, you know, that's what he does. So, you know, yeah, I'm no, that would have been a stretch, but at the same time, am I completely shocked? And at this point, man, you know, I'm going to retire before he does. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you may, I mean, listen, again, I saw him uh, recently at Brewster Academy and, he doesn't look like he's aged a bit over the last 10 years. I mean, honestly, he really doesn't. And his mind is still super sharp. Um, Devo, you've been around him enough recently, obviously when you played for him, you know, is this it though? Because in my opinion, I know he said, this isn't it. He, but I think you have to always do that for recruiting purposes. If you don't have a coach in waiting in place, but you got both of your kids there. They're in their last years most likely, um, you know, it, it, do you think this is a swan song or no, you think he goes a couple more years, man, this, if you know what, for me, I guess it'd be the best way to go out. You get to coach both of your sons. Like that doesn't happen ever. Like uh, what, what's happening right now is at Syracuse with both their sons and how buddy's playing. Like that's, that stuff doesn't happen. So it, it kind of makes sense to be like, all right, go out like that. But I mean, I never got the sense of ever from coach that he wanted to stop coaching. Like it's, it's, you know, like Mike was saying, it's his, that's what get his juices going. You know, that's his rush. Like that's his fix, man. Like he loves basketball. He loves to be in the office. He loves to be in the gym. Like he loves to just watch it. I mean, that's, you know, if you take that away from him at that age, at 77, like, what is he going to do? You He's know, got no he hobbies, right? No hobbies. I mean, you know, he golfs obviously, but this is, basketball is coach bank that's him like that's that's what he does and he's good at it you know and and to be at a school for 
that long, man. And, and, and it's crazy because now you see Coach K retiring and Roy Williams. And then right. you're like, yes. everybody's turning their head to coach. Like, you know, what's going on? And, what, you know, when is it going to be you? And he's he's not budget, man. Like, he, he, he loves ball. And, I mean, they you know, we got to the Sweet 16 last year, so we're still having success. And then you see these recruits he's bringing in and Benny Williams and then, you know, these guys in 2022. I mean, you know, he's, he's keeping it going, man. So, uh, who knows? I mean, like you said, it, 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 it makes sense for me to go out, you know, when, you know, coaching your kids, but you know, he still has it in him. Like, I guess it's, it's up to him. It's his call, Mike. It's his call. Right. I mean, yeah. that's, that's just what it is. The one time I thought he might of his own accord, hang it up was when the boys were getting ready to go play in college. And I thought maybe he'd step back so that he could go watch both Jimmy and buddy. And at the time, daughter you know buddy's twin sister jamie was going to go play ball at the university of rochester mm -hmm. so you know, so i thought okay he's going to peel it back he's going to go watch everybody play but man we, we we crossed that bridge a long time ago and so yeah now you know i don't i don't know when he's going to decide to hang it up yeah he could walk out the door at the end of this coming season when buddy and jimmy are going to have their senior day at the dome but you know, on the other hand, it's it's not like he's exactly like the guy who buys into all these sappy Hollywood endings. He's like, no, yeah. I, that's not me. I want to keep coaching. All right, last thing before we uh, we wrap here, uh, give me your expectations for this year's team. What what do you if, if gun to your head? What do they end up doing this year, regular season and tournament? Listen, we know there's no correlation between Syracuse's regular season and tournament. If anything, it's like the worse they do or, or the more mediocre they do in the regular season, the better tournament run they're going to have. Uh, Eric, what do you got with this team? I, I mean, I'm always going to be optimistic. I think I think they'll make a tournament run. I think they'll, they'll be able to get in the tournament. They'll, they'll be in this, you know, five, six, seven, and probably in the ACC. And, and, you know, they could get up to that, you know, four spot. Who knows? I really didn't do my homework too much on the other teams and how, you know, how good they are. But. Um, I think offensively, we're able to score the ball. It's just defensively, you know, what are we going to be able to do? Are we going to be able to shut down teams and, you know, guard that three-point line and, and rebound the basketball? And, and for me, I want to try to get a little bit of this back into it, you know, getting up and down transition. Like, if you see great Syracuse teams, they're always good in transition. That's, that's easy buckets for us. And now we're getting back and we're already set up in the zone, which is when we're set up and moving well, it's hard for teams to score against us. So if we could, you know, you know do those little things, I think – we're going to give ourselves a chance to, to definitely compete. And, um, you know, I think we'll make a tourney run and, and, and get ourselves in there. Mike? 9 and 11 in the ACC, barely get in the tournament, go to the Final Four, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you know, I think this team can actually do well in the ACC. I think a 12 and 8 conference record is, is perfectly reasonable. And, then, you know, the tournament, as Syracuse has proven, both for the good and the bad, is kind of a crapshoot. Um, they can surprise you and go to the Sweet 16. They can surprise you and go to the Final Four like they did in 2016. But, you know, other times, you, you know, I've, I've, I've been able to cover the NCAA tournament in some years with just an overnight bag, you know. So, um, you know, I don't know. I tell you what, where this team – it gets seeded and whether they're really going to get a, a good seed, bad seed, or even get in might not depend on the ACC so much. They've got a brutal non-conference yeah. schedule. Uh, they got a trip to the Bahamas for the battle for Atlantis. They've got road game at Georgetown, a neutral court game against Villanova and a home game against Indiana. Um, you know, that's why, you know, I think maybe some of the experience of, you know, the, the Bayheim brothers, the Joe Girard, the Cole Swider, they're going to have to really lean on that early on in the season because they're going to have to pick off two or three wins in those games that we're looking at in order to make sure they're in good shape and have a good resume to show the committee. But I think 12 and eight in the ACC, I, I think that's reasonable. I think they can get there and that gets them in the tournament. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think they get in the tournament and then who knows what happens. Uh, this is a team that I don't think has been seeded better than eighth since 2015 in the tournament here's what i will say normally teams are scared of syracuse in the tournament because of their zone this year they'll be scared of syracuse in the tournament because they have four guys 
that might be among the top 50 shooters in America. And if they get hot in the tournament, they're going to be really, really tough to stop. So Syracuse, I think they'll be a fun team to watch this year. A uh, lot of threes going through the hoops, a lot of threes going up. Uh, Devo would be happy to be on this team uh, with, with, with all the three-point shooting. So I uh, appreciate it, guys. Eric Devendorf, Mike Waters, uh, thanks for joining us. Make sure you follow the Field of 68 uh, for all your preseason content. And, again, make sure you follow the scorers table with Eric Devendorf for all your Syracuse content as well. All right. Perfect, boys. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for doing this. That was great. That was great. Uh, kind of getting you, my man. juices flowing here for, uh, for the season. We need it. We need it coming up. Coming soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Appreciate wait. it. We'll talk soon. I'll see All you right, both. See you see Good you. to see you, Jeff. See you, Mike. See you, Mike. See you, Mike.